I'm Mel. And I'm Margo. Welcome, Welcome to, to the transcript. transcript. This week, the transcript tackles the issue of health insurance in the United States. Sits down with the Northampton High School boys and girls track teams. And talks with some seniors about their final capstone projects. This week, North Korean state media has reported that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is reconsidering attending the summit between North Korea and the United States, planned for June 12th. It has been reported that Kim Jong-un may pull out of the summit if the United States continues to insist that they give up their nuclear weapons program. The statement from state media said that North Korea would never accept economic assistance in exchange for unilaterally abandoning their nuclear weapons program. On Wednesday, the White House said that the summit was still on. Israeli troops fired on tens of thousands of Palestinians protesting at the Gaza border fence on Monday. The troops killed at least 61 people and injured 2,700. The protests surged on Monday against the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem, a city which is claimed by both Israelis and Palestinians as their capital. On Tuesday, Turkey expelled the Israeli ambassador over the killings. On Monday, the United States Supreme Court struck down a federal law that prohibits states from allowing sports betting. The decision sides with the state of New Jersey, which recently lifted restrictions on sports gambling in an attempt to boost the revenue of Atlantic City. Some argue that allowing sports betting will bring in revenue into states, while others claim that it opens doors for gambling addictions. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. For years, the issue of health care has been discussed, debated, and voted on in the United States. This week, we're trying to make sense of the intricacies of health care in the U.S. and learn how this debate might affect you. On December 24, 2009, the Senate passed the Affordable Care Act, sometimes known as Obamacare, providing affordable health plans for low- and middle-income citizens. The bill allowed youth to stay on their parents' health care plans until they're 26 years old and sought to provide health care coverage for the 20 million uninsured Americans. But what exactly happens after that? I sat down with financial math teacher Randy Gordon to discuss the different insurance options. Insurance is a, an agreement between a, a, an insurance company and an individual in which people pay premiums for or monthly bills in return for access to certain benefits. Massachusetts provided a, uh, created a mandate system, and so the way it works is, is if you don't have health care in the state, you have a uh, tax burden, a, um, a penalty essentially. The idea of a universal health care in the state or in the country is such that people can have benefit, a healthier society is a better society. Um, there was a, um, a national mandate through the Affordable Care Act, and that was recently, parts of it were reversed with the current president. One option for people after they reach the age of 26 is to get health coverage through their employer. As of January 1, 2015, employers with 50 or more full-time employees were required to provide health coverage to full-time employees or else pay a tax penalty. To find out the benefits that businesses get offering health insurance to their employees, I spoke to insurance broker Richard Cahillane. The reason that they offer benefits is mostly to what we call attract and retain. So you're trying to attract people, you've got a good employee, they're doing a great job for you, you want to keep them, and you want to make sure that they have benefits and they feel safe and secure. Well, it's a safety net, you know. It's, a, it's basically a financial safety net because the cost of going to the hospital and getting sick is very, very expensive. So if you have to pay a couple hundred dollars a month over time, it's probably going to save you a lot of money so that when you do go to the hospital, it's going to hopefully save you money over time. What I think needs to be done is to keep the cost of medicine down. More than anything else, in addition to getting health insurance for yourself, advocate for a change in society. Advocate for making uh, universal health care in this country. Uh, some people like Bernie Sanders have argued for single payer. That is one model, but ultimately the goal is, is to create a system that's um, affordable, 
and beneficial to the country. The United States is the country that pays more for health care per person, and depending on how we go politically, we have to find ways to take care of each other as a country. I'm Flor Castillo, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. <laughs> Y'all ready for this? As spring is coming to a close and lots of sports teams are beginning to wrap up the regular season, members of the boys and girls track team have their eyes set on another Western Mass title. Both the girls and boys track team bring in numerous medals and titles each season and are looking to do exactly the same this spring. To learn about the girls team chemistry and how the girls coexist with the boys team that has lots of personality, I've talked with sophomores Adia Bennett and Sam Ginsberg. We maintain a connective team spirit by going to pasta parties and doing things like tie-dyeing and we also have a lot of time together at practice. Yeah, like in between running reps we're able to talk and on long runs and stuff. I think a lot of people think of the squad boys when they think of the track team, but what a lot of people don't know is there's actually squad girls. We just don't really put it on social media as much as they do. We stay motivated by like helping each other to motivate the team and we just have a great dynamic. I think that the best motivation comes from like your peers and also within like when you're running, you kind of want to strive to do better. And before workouts, it is definitely hard to motivate yourself, but it feels so good after and to PR in your races that it's totally worth it. When you think of the boys track team here at NHS, you might think of the squad boys. To fully understand what a squad boy is and how the senior members feel about leaving the squad in a few weeks and what they expect from the younger generation, I sat down with members Jonathan and Michael Dean and Noah Andrew. The squad boy mentality is kind of one of, of unity. We don't we kind of act as one, as a unit, and we, in many ways, are the same person. The two main pillars, I'd say, of, of character would probably be uh, transparency and loyalty. Those are really important things, I think, that we all really value. Um, I think there are a few things that we're looking forward to and that, that we expect. I think one of them is kind of this continuation of, of success and um, kind of hard work. I mean also just like yeah continuing the really inclusive open community if we could just continue continue that uh, that'd be really really great. The track team is looking to get their sixth consecutive Western Mass title tomorrow at 9 a.m. Baseball has a home game today at 4 against Chicopee and boys tennis is also home at 4 against East Long Meadow. Girls tennis is away in Aguam and girls softball has an away game at 4 against Chicopee Comp. Boys Lacrosse is also away at 7 o'clock in Minichog. Lastly, come support the girls and boys ultimate teams in the Pioneer Valley Invitational Tournament all weekend at the Oxbow. Thanks for watching Hemped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. On Wednesday, Senate Democrats were joined by three Republicans in voting in favor of saving Obama-era net neutrality rules. Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey said that this is the most important vote we're going to have in this generation on the internet. Neat. In other news, for many seniors, their final year of high school is one of new educational opportunities where they can dedicate a semester to an independent project called the Capstone. A Capstone is an open ended project in which a student can pursue an academic goal of their choosing. I spoke with Northampton High School seniors Tashi Salcedo, Maggie Friel, and Galen Windsor to learn more about what they did for their capstone projects this year. I did my project on food justice and educating children about food justice and sustainability. For my project, I created a series of two presentations that I gave at the Smith College Campus School. And something I'm really passionate about because it's a really interesting intersection of racial issues, of social issues, environmental issues, and political issues. Um, all focused on making sure everyone has equal access to food. So my capstone project is a multimedia based project that is driven with a conceptual theme that I and another friend have been working on for the past semester. I always wanted to try combining different forms of art that I kind of learned throughout the course of my years at the high school. Um, taking the honors art program and doing the transcript, they, they were both visual mediums but they were in completely different ballparks. So I thought it would always be interesting to kind of combine my experience in 
those two classes into one project. And I want people to see this project down the line and see where I was coming from and where NHS was coming from and Northampton, see what people were doing during that specific moment in time. I decided for my capstone project to uh, record an album of original songs. It just seemed like a really fun way to kind of culminate that songwriting experience in my senior year of high school. And I've been kind of dabbling in recording for several years, kind of doing my own kind of solo production kind of stuff. But I decided that it'd be really cool to try to kind of get a more professional looking, professional sounding, um, finalized version of that. As enlightening as it may be, taking on these projects is a big deal, and it comes with its fair share of challenges. There were some upsets. In, in, in the beginning, I was trying to look for uh, a kind of a more professional um, uh, situation to record in, um, mainly looking for just kind of spaces to record in. Ended up settling on Hayden's guest room, which has actually turned out quite well. We've been able to make it soundproofed and, and sound good acoustically. I think I bit off a little more than I could chew at the beginning of my project. I initially wanted to create an entire curriculum for middle and elementary school age students, so I had to kind of work around that and refocus my project several times. If you, if you want to do something, um, and you've been wanting to do it for a while, and you've always felt like you've never had the time to do it, a capstone is the perfect way to explore that. Thanks for watching. I'm Mikey Diaz, and I'll see you next week on In Other News. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching. Remember to come by the Black Box to see the effect of gamma rays on Man in the Moon Marigolds tonight and Saturday at 7, with a matinee on Saturday at 2. And don't forget, if you want to work on the transcript next year, you can pick up an application outside of room G16. Also, head over to nhstechnology.org to watch this week's episode of Humans of Northampton. I see so much value in a program like this, not only for the school community, but also on a personal level. Um, and I just really think that this is the, one of the most valuable things that a student in this high school can choose to do with their time.